everybody, Dan Ohm and Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Friday, July the 21st is where the turf meets the surf. It's opening day at beautiful Del Mar and the traditional opening day feature is the Oceanside Stakes. It's a restricted event for three-year-olds going a mile on the turf. Let's take a peek at this field. It is carded as race number eight. Please scan or click the QR code for race of the day access on your mobile devices, which includes free formulator pass performances. What a competitive edition of the Oceanside. 14 entered to run, very well-matched group. Uh, yeah, a lot of different horses can win here. Wide open race. I feel like there's a real chance you could get a price in here. Um, so many horses in this field stretching out, Dan. That doesn't seem typical for the ocean side, but the big field is typical for this race. Th this race never fails to deliver. And with a big field, you would expect an honest pace. And Timeform US is expecting a fast pace, as you see by that red bar. The nine conclude, the 12 ever a rebel. These horses are very, very fast, especially Conclude, who is stretching out off of a sprint win. Conclude, I think, is going to make the lead. The question is, can he go fast and last the mile? Yeah, that's the real issue for anybody who, who who wants to be forward in here. And it does feel like there could be several horses looking for a position up close to the pace in here, Dan. I mean, how fast are they going to have to go to get there? And then what will they have left in the tank for the stretch run? Now, the horse with the LP flag over the chiclet, number six, Mr. Fisk. Well, he's got the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. A fast pace would help his chances. He's also trying turf for the first time. We'll talk a little bit about more in a bit. The one is Classical Cat, and he just 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 barely qualifies for the ocean side the ocean sides for non-winners of a sweet stakes of fifty thousand at a mile or over in 2023 classical cat won this race eddie logan at a mile on december the 30th he just qualifies he got a great trip in the eddie logan he's now a perfect two for two on turf he got to the outside he grinds home to win now he's got to deal with a long layoff yeah, he does. You're right. He has to do it off of a layoff here, which I guess could be an issue, um, especially if this pace is fast, Dan. He's going to try to keep close to it. He's going to have to be pretty fit to win here. I still like all of his races. I liked his career debut when he won on dirt. Um, I thought he ran really well that day. He has way more of a turf pedigree. And both of his turf starts are really good. He got a great trip in that race. He kind of worked hard to get it done. It wasn't you know, the most visually appealing win in the world, but it was still relatively fast. I think this horse is pretty good. The number two, Maz Rapido, could be part of this crowded pace picture as he stretches out for the first time off several sprint efforts. He was fourth in the Desert Code last time out, a race that featured a very fast pace. He was up close to it, but the winner of that race, Conclude, was setting that pace. Maz Rapido, I think, is going to take advantage of this inside post, try to clear Classical Cat, maybe, and sit on the rail in behind the leaders. He could probably fall into a decent enough trip here, Dan. We'll see how much of a kick he can deliver here as they try to stretch him back out again. They've only gone long with him once. That was in a grade three stateside debut. He didn't run that well that day uh, from a tough outside post. Maybe he can do better. I didn't love him off his sprint form, um, but he's a big price if you like him in this race. The three is Zalamo. This horse is going to make his North American debut after campaigning in France. Now, both of his wins overseas came over the all-weather surface. His two turf races weren't great. He shows a bullet workout over the Del Mar turf. Mike Smith takes the mound for Leonard Powell. Maybe if this pace falls apart, you're going to get a European stayer to kick them all down. I, th I think that's a reasonable way to look at it, Dan, um, especially if, you know, he winds up being, you know, some kind of interesting price. And I get it. His, his better races, I guess you would say, came on the all weather over there, but the two turf starts, it feels like they just came against way better horses than this. It's not like this is a super strong field. He's shipping over to run in. The distance is not supposed to be an issue in here. Um, I think, I thought there was plenty to like for a trainer, Leonard Powell, who's just so good, Dan. I always respect his horses. The four is El Oro, who began his career on the synthetic, but his fortunes have changed drastically since switching to the turf and shipping to Southern California. He's two for two, including this win going six and a half furlongs on the straightaway at Santa Anita. And in this race, he got just a lovely trip and ride under Ramon Vasquez, saved ground, got through on the rail and is very game to win. He doesn't need the lead. I guess that's, you know, a little bit of a feather in his cap here as they're going to stretch him out. Um, he'll probably be, you know, somewhat forward in this race, Dan, but at least maybe if he doesn't make the lead, he can still run some kind of a representative race. He, he's obviously run fine in his two turf starts. He's going to have to run way better than that against this field. 
Trainer Doug O'Neill hasn't been afraid to challenge the number five odd G's who was stakes placed sprinting on the turf as a two-year-old. They sent him over to Dubai in the winter. They ran him in the UAE Derby. They came back, turned him back, sprinting at Churchill Downs. He ran a late running uh, sixth, beaten three lengths. Blinker's coming yeah. off in here. This is a horse I think has limited upside after all the racing he's done. I think he's going to need a good trip from the back. Yeah, he, I agree with you. He's got limited upside. And the more you sort of take apart his past performances, Dan, his races, when they stretch him out, I know that there are, some of them have been in pretty tough spots. They're not that good. You know, I, I just wonder how far he really wants to go. The six, Mr. Fisk, again, has the fastest late pace rating, according to Time Form US, but that's based off of his dirt races. The Oceanside will be his turf debut. The good news is there is turf in this pedigree. The Arrogates have done okay on the turf. This dam was a stakes winner on the surface. Maybe Mr. Fisk is finally going to get a chance to strut his stuff on the surface he's been waiting for. That, that's possible. I saw all those same things, too. I actually tried to make a case for this horse. Um, if he does transfer his dirt form over... Um, he could be pretty tough in this race, I suppose, Dan. Um, and there is enough turf pedigree for me to at least get mildly interested. I'll, I guess I'll just say this about him. I'll wait and see what kind of price he is because it's Baffert, um, even though he's switching over to turf here. These horses tend to take money, and I just wouldn't, wouldn't want any kind of short price on this horse. I think the number seven agency is a true sleeper in this spot. The source sold for $400,000 as a two-year-old in training, was graded stakes placed in his second lifetime start on the dirt. But in his turf debut, his first start off of a lengthy layoff, he did some very good things going down the hill for trainer Mark Latt. You see him coming widest and fastest. He's going to get up late. He showed no rust off the layoff, and I think he'll stretch out no problem. Yeah, I agree. I, I mostly agree with all that stuff. I thought he ran really well here, um, coming widest and fastest. This horse on the lead's a little bit green, but he's still going to close this horse down pretty easily. I thought he ran really well there. He still, he still doesn't have that much of a turf pedigree, Dan. Um, so I, I just wonder if he's really going to be a turf horse going forward. I don't know. He, I liked his race last time. Um, if he's some kind of a big price in here, I could use him, but I do have my concerns about him. It's the old two sprints to a route move for the eight kid Azteca, third start of the form cycle for Peter Miller. He scored in an open first level allowance going down the hill at six and a half furlongs. And kid Azteca had a lot of work to do at the 316s poll. The good news is they were blazing up front and they come back to him late. He did get a great trip in this race. It's another good performance from him, though. He's just he's pretty much been really consistent right from the start of his career. He's another one, though. He's going to stretch out here. He's third off the layoff. He's run okay going a mile the three times they've tried it, but he didn't finish particularly strongly in any one of those races. When Classical Cat beat him last September, Dan, this horse, I thought he got a great ride in there. He took the race to Classical Cat off the turn. He had dead aim through the stretch, and he just didn't have enough at the end. He's another horse. I wonder how far he wants to go. The runner-up from that last race did come back to run second in a first-level allowance with an 86 buyer. Conclude is the expected speed. We'll watch his win at the de in the Desert Code, going down the hill six and a half furlongs for Phil D'Amato. They went real fast in this race, 21-1 and one for the opening quarter, 42-2 and two for the half. But what's notable is that there's just no closing going on. They ran 1-2 all the way around the track, and Conclude is just going to hold on. Yeah, it feels like these one-two finishes maybe were just the two best horses in the race, but you're right. With that kind of a pace, you'd think somebody would come running late in here, and they just didn't do that. Uh, still a good performance for this horse. I mean, he was blazing away early, still held on. He's got two really fast races on his card. I don't doubt his ability. I wonder how far he wants to go. I wonder how slow he'll be able to go early in this race. And then I wonder what kind of price he'd be dead. Another horse stretching out for this race, I wouldn't take any kind of short price on him. Escape Artist is up next. Kent DeZormo takes the mount for trainer Michael McCarthy coming off a victory in a first-level allowance going this mile distance at Santa Anita. He settled very nicely off a moderate pace in second off a big long shot, took the lead in the stretch. I like the way he's striding away late, but he really got a nice trip. He did. This is good stuff from this horse, though. And, you know, one of the few in here, you don't really have to worry about distance. He was off to a little bit of a stutter step start here. It's not like he broke running, but he just charged forward, got into a perfect position in this race, and you saw how he finished the race off, Dan. That was a, a really nice performance. This horse, I think, is going to be pretty tough in here. 
a super impressive visually is paired up by her tops in his last two, and that could be a harbinger for another forward move. Panic Alarm is the 11. This is another horse coming in from overseas. I'm willing to forgive that last race at Ascot. He was in against 28 other horses, two of them being next out winners. After eight starts, however, and not facing the toughest competition over there, there is a question as to how good he eventually is. I, I worried about that too. He's just a little bit difficult to get a read on. He wasn't running in, in super strong races over there. And it's not like his form, you know, stands out in any way. He does ship over here and do a spot where, listen, maybe he'll just get the distance against a bunch of horses who are stretching out here and it'll make all the difference. But I didn't love his form and he's not a great price on the morning line. Ever a rebel, the number 12 has early speed. Time Form US believes he's going to be right up there with Conclude. I'm not sure if Phil D'Amato is going to send his two horses out there to duel him into the ground. Maybe Ever a rebel will sit as he did in his one and only turf start when he was trained by Wesley Ward last fall, going five eighths of a mile. This is just a one paced performance, but it was a decent field. He finishes third in here. The fourth place horse is now stakes placed, came out of this race to win on synthetic. Yeah, he didn't run poorly in this race, that's for sure. He's never a real threat to win this thing, but it's not, you know, some kind of terrible performance. We'll see how much more he can improve that because he's already done his improving since D'Amato uh, took over his training, and he did that improving on a totally different surface, and now you're going to expect him to be that good back on the grass again. He's not my kind of horse, but he has a big price on the line. I think a more likely pace threat to conclude is next door. That's the number 13 game time who went gate to wire in the Alcatraz last time out at Golden Gate Fields. And in this race at three to five, he was just able to make a nice, easy lead back down the fractions on the backside and is able to kick on home with a rock solid 84 buyer speed figure. Now, game time's best races have come when he gets to the front. I find it hard to believe he's going to out sprint conclude, but he might push that horse. And he's a key to the race because he could set things up for somebody else. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, that, the thing that I didn't like about him, and I do overall, I respect his form and you don't have to worry about the distance with him. He's got two wins on his card and in both of those races going this mile distance, he just got absolutely loose on the lead and it's not going to happen in here. Um, he's got some other races that are okay, but that Eddie Logan last year, it's not like he was under tons of pressure on the lead in there, Dan, and he was no match for Classical Cat. Tough, tough post for the far outside runner, the 14 Zabul. Some angles as he goes third off the layoff, dirt to turf, blinkers off. Rallied from off the pace to win his debut sprinting. His other two races, to me, not as impressive. He's got a lot to prove. I'm going to take a, a totally different view of this horse than you are, it sounds like. I really liked his debut with a big late run. I know it was going shorter. He, you know, his Cecil B. DeMille, his second career start, I don't think you would say he ran great in there. But that was not the kind of race where you wanted to be wide and last and trying to close. Those two, first two finishers went one, two around the track, and nobody made up any ground. He came off the layoff in a, in a sprint, and it, to me, looked like a total prep in that race. He actually ran through the stretch in there with no chance to win that race. I thought that was a deceptively good performance. I don't know if it was by design to switch the dirt last time. It probably was. He stumbled badly at the start and had no chance in there. I don't care about that race anyway because it was on dirt. Back to turf in here. He's got an impossible post, but he's a huge price. They're supposed to run in front of this horse and give him something to close into late in this race. Um, boy, I'm very, very interested at a big price. I'd like to see him break. He hasn't done so yet in any of yeah. his starts, but even with that fast pace setup, it could actually help a horse that is not the quickest from the stalls. And as Mike mentioned, he'll be a good price and perhaps a bit dirtied up. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for the ocean side. I had a very tough time in that race. I think Conclude's going to get to the front. I think he's going to go a little bit slower than Time Form US projects, but I think you're right. He's got to be a little bit of a price, and I'm not sure I'm going to get it. I probably would have to spread with the uh, 113 and 11. Mike, you're going for the big bomb, the 14 from out of it. Yeah, this race is impossible. Um, I definitely didn't want to settle for any of the horses who were going to be, you know, shorter prices in here. I have a thing for this horse anyway, Dan. I'll admit I've done a little bit of chasing of him. I'm not going to give up yet. I do think he ran really, really well off the layoff on turf, and I just don't care about his last race. We'll see what kind of trip he can pull from post 14. Should be a great betting race. It's the Ocean Side, the opening day feature at Beautiful Del Mar on Friday. Good luck.